Hey guys, and welcome to another weekly Whip Wednesday. As you may have noticed, we took last week off, and that was not because I wasn't crocheting all week, but my family had taken a little trip down to Florida, and even though I was crocheting, it was a lot harder to do videos of progress, and I didn't have really a way to upload it since I do this on a camera and not my phone. And even if I did it on my phone, it would be in separate videos, so yeah. We just kind of took last week off, and I was pulling this out first today because I need something a little mindless. I am, um, uh, we'll get into the dramas of travel <laughs> when my little guys are down for a nap, but yes, it was quite the eventful travel trip this time around, and uh, yeah, we'll get into that later. But this is where we were two weeks ago or approximately and so I will move this now well Leo please not help right now okay? okay yeah just a minute and then you can help okay uh, we'll be moving that stitch marker up to over here and this is a single double crochet uh, cat mat that is for donation purposes it is made out of simply soft yarns I believe because I don't have any reason to think that they're not simply soft I'm not exactly sure on the colors uh, but they are just stuff that's been laying around that I'm trying to use up to make room for I guess what I think of as nicer yarns since I like to use a little bit higher quality yarns for my family stuff and since that's been what I've been making lately I'm trying to burn through some of my acrylics because these are both a hundred percent acrylic yarns and we are Leah what hook is that does it have numbers on it I think I'm using a J hook because I think my seven millimeters with my other thing um, so yeah we are working I believe with a J hook but Leah won't hand that to me and we will just continue working this with my single doubles. So what that is, is it's just alternating single crochets and double crochets. And I'm about, I think, at nine and a half inches tall. And we are going for a 20 inch mat, I think, is what it said for uh, the height. So we'll just probably keep on working on this today. And that might be about it because my brain's a wee bit shot. <laughs> but we'll get that to that in story time a little bit later. Okay guys, I just put the littles down for the nap. And it's doing this outside, if you can hear it. That is what I assume is sleet balls. Yeah, not not real fun. I wonder if we will have practice tonight or if it's going to get canceled though. Nope, it's getting harder. Maybe it'll turn into rain. Hey y'all. I hope you're ready for some story time. Uh, I brought my wheel up so that I could spin while I chat with you since I think that'll be about as mindless as I can go. Oh, Sona, I never let you back out. Just suck it. Sona ran on the other side of the gate when the uh, sleety rain started and I think she's finally back up at the top of the stairs. Okay, well, she still wouldn't come out. Uh, are, she's not supposed to be on that side of the stairs because that's the side the cat food is on. Ooh, did I not? Oh, it's because I have this turned. Okay. I can't have this quite positioned so you can see it. <laughs> um, but I'll turn that down so you can hear a little bit. It's super loud. It's a little better on noise level. Um, yeah, so our Florida journey, we were supposed to travel on Sunday to Sunday, which was January 20-something. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I can't even remember. Uh, to February, till the Super Bowl. That was February 3rd, right? Whatever that Sunday, because, yeah. Um, our way down there, 
We literally left the house to drive to the airport because we were trying to be responsible and be early. And as we were getting to our second exit, I think, technically, because we get on the interstate and then we were looking for our first exit, we get a text message saying our flight has been delayed. And that day was kind of sleety snow stuff here. Um, but it wasn't the weather here that was actually postponing things. Uh, apparently, I don't know what caused it to get delayed, but just kept getting pushed back and pushed back, like an hour, an hour, here an hour there. And when we finally got to the airport, because we kept trying to waste time <laughs> so that we weren't in the airport forever with four children, and uh, we, got, we traveled to Florida with my mother-in-law, and her husband, so my husband's stepdad, and they had beat us there because they weren't going to drive around. I'm like, I've got kids, i got to wear them out <laughs> before we are sitting in an airplane for two and a half hours where they can't move. Um, so yeah, we get there. Our flight was originally supposed to leave at about, I think, 4.30. I think boarding, or I don't remember if ours are... I don't think it was departure. It might have been boarding was at 1.55 a.m. when we finally left. <laughs> and we're supposed to board at like 3.30, I think, originally. <laughs> P.m. on Sunday instead of A.M. on Monday. So yeah, that was lots of fun with kids in the airport. Um, they decided, I guess they legally because it was mechanical issues on the plane that was coming to get us. They legally have to give us food and stuff while we were there. But when they gave us our food vouchers, they didn't tell us that the food court in the airport closed at a certain time. I don't know what time it was. It was probably like 8 p.m. So not like super early or something, but they didn't even bother to tell us that it was closing. Although, I will note that they did tell the smokers when the security people were going to leave so they couldn't no longer go out for smoke breaks. Yeah, because feeding little children is way less important than letting you guys get your cigarette in. Yeah, just saying guys. <laughs> Sorry. That that's my soapbox for the for the wait time. They did actually around midnight, I think, get us Domino's pizza, which is like my least favorite of the cheap quick crappy pizza. <laughs> but we did get it. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they had to bring it in like three different times or so because it was just that much people waiting for this flight. Um, and Leo and Zane finally fell asleep about 20 minutes, I think, before the airplane got there. So they don't even know that we flew in an airplane because they were asleep the entire time and it was dark out. So anytime they did wake up in the airplane, they were just in darkness and didn't care. Um, so yeah, that was our flight there. I think we were supposed to originally get to Florida at about 8, 8.30 p.m. on Sunday night. And we got to Florida to the rental destination, which you do have to walk to, but it's not like super far, at 7 a.m. on <laughs> on Monday morning. So I had been up at that point for over 24 hours straight because, yeah, flying with toddlers, you don't get to sleep on the plane. It's all about trying to keep them from screaming and trying to get their screaming controlled when they are screaming. Yeah, they both had a screaming fit on the airplane. Zane, who was sitting up with my husband, and then Leo, who was sitting back with me. Uh, so, that was fun. And then I guess we had other drama with the airline and, like, the rental car situation, and they were sitting there telling us one person my husband originally got on the phone and talked to hung up on him, I'm like, they're customer service representatives. They're not allowed to hang up on you. So that was aggravating. The second guy we had was super helpful and nice and like no problem at all. 
but the lady that we had first, it's like, she was like, you're raising your voice. It's like, we've been awake for 24 hours, lady. Just do what you have to do. We don't know how it works. We're not you. <sighs> but yeah, so that was all because instead of getting two rental cars, my husband and his mom decided to get one rental car and it ended up my husband did all the driving, but it was supposed to have it so either one of them could drive. Um, and we just had a large, it was a 15 passenger van <laughs> for the whole time. And we needed to cancel the car rental on the other set of tickets. So his mom was supposed to have a rental and then we were supposed to have a rental and we only needed one rental. And so all he needed was the person to go, okay, if you don't pick the car up by now, or, you know, by this time, I think they told him, as long as you don't pick it up in 24 hours, it's canceled. And I think he had to call to get that activated, but the first lady just sat there yelling at him how Alamo isn't their problem, they don't control them, and they can't do anything about it. Which they clearly could. They clearly... I mean, I know Alamo has nothing to do with them, that's why we had to call Allegiant, the airline that we're flying with, and get them to handle it and just tell us what to do. And it wasn't like my husband was rude. He did not curse at the lady. And so I just thought it was so funny because he doesn't curse like at all ever anyways. So if he would have cursed at her, I would have understand her hanging up on him. But he did it. And he was just trying to get it because Alamo told him one thing and then she was telling him that he was completely wrong and was wasting his time, which was totally false, and he was actually doing what he was supposed to be doing. She just didn't want to deal with it. And so that was aggravating. Oh, the other aggravating thing about travel. So we get to Florida at, you know, what was it? I don't even know what time we actually touched down at. It was after 5.30. At, no, it would have had him been after 6.30 because it didn't take that long to get baggage and over to the rental car. Um, but, you know, like I said, we've been up for over 24 hours at this point. And I have two toddlers. We have a double stroller so that we don't have to, you know, uh, mess with them. We checked it in at the, the thing. I've done it before where it's waited for me to put them in on the way out. We waited till the end for everyone to get off the plane so that we could, you know, not be in the way with everyone trying to get their stuff. And our stroller was at baggage claim and not at the airplane. I was not a happy camper being a blind person, having to carry a sleeping toddler all the way to baggage claim because they didn't have the courtesy to set the stroller out. I think there was even a woman there with a wheelchair, and I don't know what the situation was with that, but, you know, they offered to help her. They didn't offer to help the people with the four children and two of them sleeping toddlers with their double stroller that they took away from us. And not to mention that I am blind. I was marked blind on the ticket, and yet we got no, like, service. You know, we got to pre-board because we had talked to them, you know, being in the airport for 12 hours, we kind of got comfy with the people there. <laughs> so yeah, we pre-boarded so that we wouldn't be in the way. Uh, and by then, like I said, the boys were asleep, at least the littles. So yeah, that was entertaining and interesting. Uh, our trip there was fine. I'll, I'll do another post that's, you know, ooh, I really probably need to move this. Um, Sorry, I got talking. <laughs> no surprise there, right, guys? Uh, I don't want to mountain that high on there. Um, but then... So our way back... I'm still okay. We were supposed to be on a plane I think the departure time was like 2.30 and then they had moved it to like 4 
I want to say, because I think our loading was three something. And about an hour before that, oh, I'm, no, it had been more than an hour. Because we left the airport at three. It was funny because things actually like started and stopped on the hour. <laughs> Uh, which makes it a little easier for me to remember. But they decided, so I'm going to say it was probably about one something. They decided to cancel our flight because there was a low shelf cloud or something and fog in Des Moines, which is where we needed to fly into. Now, this would be okay, except for this is Allegiant. They do, you know, the discounted flights or whatever. And they only have flights to our area on the weekends-ish. So their next flight to Des Moines was on Thursday. <laughs> and I think it was probably fairly already booked. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, and we have eight people that we need, you know, to seat on a plane. When we book stuff, we have to book one of the kids with my husband's mom. Uh, or my mother-in-law because they won't let you book that many children with two adults or something yeah it, it gets confusing but we had to book one of the kids one of the twins with my husband's mom and we had to do that last time we flew too because we have a timeshare and she has a room and we have a room and they adjoin so she always flies down with us so that she can help kind of watch the kids and yeah it it was just like seriously you want us you know two of the people we have work full-time jobs you want us to wait from Sunday afternoon all the way till Thursday which I don't I don't know how it legally works because they're supposed to get you on the next available flight as I understand it that next available flight is supposed to be on any airline, not just their airline. And I was willing to fly out of just about anywhere and then take a rental and drive, you know, the three hours to get to our actual location. Because there was people that did get on the Omaha flight, but since we're such a large group and have so many pieces, we couldn't, like, be all together. And so we ended up at the back of the line for the refund and cancellation or whatever line and by then the Omaha flights were all filled. I'm not exactly sure how they flew into Omaha if it was so bad in Des Moines because they're literally you know like straight line shot of each other and I think Chicago was supposed to be super bad too. I don't understand but I was like we can fly into Minneapolis, we can fly into Omaha, we could fly into Moline which is in Illinois um, for you <laughs> that don't know, it's the Quad City Airport. We've flown from there before. It's like we could fly from there, or we could fly from Kansas City, or like anywhere around those, because I don't know exactly where they fly from. But they were absolutely not accommodating. My husband did not have me with him at the ticket counter, and so I couldn't sit there and argue my point with, I know a little bit about the laws around this. I don't know a lot because I've never actually been on a completely flat out canceled. I've been delayed. I've been like shoved around on planes before and stuff, but I've never been on a flight that was just flat out canceled. And I didn't know what I was, you know, what we had to do, but I knew that they had to get us on a flight. But instead, my husband decided to take the option of driving back. Now, for you <laughs> that don't realize where I'm from, I am from central Iowa. I live in the Des Moines metro on the west side of it. And that is from Sanford, just driving time, 20 hours. Because the airports are the smaller airports, so we drive or we fly from Des Moines to Sanford, Orlando. So it's about 40 miles outside of Orlando. It's not the actual Orlando airport. So yeah, they wanted us to drive in like a minivan <laughs> from Sanford, Orlando straight to Des Moines, Iowa in less than 24 hours 
with four children, an adult that can't hold their bladder for anything, um, and, like, yeah, it, I thought my husband was absolutely crazy. I pretty much still think he was absolutely insane. I'm like, I would have much rather just taken a flight on Monday or Sunday night from Sanford. We were willing to drive all the way back to Orlando, get on a flight, and go from there to somewhere within like three to four hours from our house. I'm like, you don't understand. We have to go with toddlers and two kids who can't keep their hands off each other, the older two. And I'm the one who gets to sit in the back with them the entire time. It's like, you just, you don't get it. <laughs> I mean, we survived. It, it probably was helpful that a lot of our drive was overnight. We did not make it in 20 hours. We did not make it in 24 hours. I think it was like 26 or something hours. So we still like literally made really good time. And, you know, we had to eat really, really crappy food because we needed places where the kids could just run around crazy. So there was a McDonald's. I actually really liked the aesthetics of this McDonald's. Where was it at? It was like in Lake something... Uh, Georgia and they didn't actually have a play place we couldn't find one a McDonald's with a play place on our route or something uh, but they had like a fenced in outdoor eating area and at least there it was still warm enough that they could run around so when we got done eating we just took them out there for like half an hour and just let them run around from table to table <laughs> just so they could get their wiggles out before it was time to go to bed <laughs> Uh, and then the other place we stopped for actual meal was it somewhere outside of St. Louis. Um, I want to say it was like Bell, Belleville or something. It was on the Illinois side, but it was, you know, near the St. Louis Metro. And there we got a Chick-fil-A because we knew the Chick-fil-A would have a plug place. And we were right. <laughs> so we actually had a play place for the kids to actually just run around crazy and play for, again, like half an hour. But yeah, I was not, not happy at all with how we were treated by the airline company. My husband was able to like argue with them and get the 15 passenger van versus the minivan <laughs> situation, which was the exact same thing that we drove. It wasn't the van that we drove, uh, but it was, you know, basically the exact same transit Ford van, 15 passenger van that we drove. So yeah, that was my fun days in travel to Florida and back during the polar vortex. We actually booked the flight two weeks out, so that's why I didn't have a lot of information about me even being gone or like anything set up for when I was gone because we pretty much booked it and left. <laughs> but we booked it before we knew about the polar vortex and so we were thinking we were quite clever in booking this flight and then finding out that it was supposed to be like, the kids didn't even miss that much school, because Wednesday they didn't have school. Thursday was no after... No, Thursday was late start, and Tuesday was no afternoon school activities. So, they didn't even have, like, full, regular days of school that they missed. Um, yeah, the fun adventures of traveling uh, during the winter vortex this year but yeah so this is um, my spinning project as I've shared with you before it is my what I'm hoping to hand spin a sweater this is an alpaca merino yarn um, I don't remember the exact mix but I'm hoping since it is merino and alpaca that I will have a lot of issues with the uh, with the stretching, um, I've read somewhere that, especially if you have like a 50-50, I don't remember what this mix is, but I want to say it was more like a 60-40, if that, that the 
the merino will make up for the alpaca. But this is still my first bobbin. I want to say I'm about four ounces done with it. I did a lot of this before we left when I was waiting or while we were watching Harry Potter because we did go to Universal and our 11 year old finished the series so we could watch the rest of the movies before we left. Um, but yeah, so that is my whip. And I'm trying, hopefully this isn't coming out too much worse than it was <laughs> because I've kind of tried to angle it towards you guys so you can see, but that's kind of a hard angle to spin at. Um, yeah, so that is all. Okay guys, I'm getting tired, so we're gonna go ahead and end this week's whip off. Weekly Whip Wednesday off. I got to, <coughs> excuse me, I got to about, I wanna say 14, 14 and a half inches. So maybe next week we will have this mat done. So we are getting there guys, slowly but surely.